Right, I'll put some adhesive on here. And spread that out with a toothpick. making sure I get good cover to the edges this will of course um, soak into any splits that are in this leatherette and acts to stop them fragmenting any further than they already have. Make sure I get any excess off. I don't want lumps and bumps from the excess glue. That's it. Make sure you get your leatherette the right way up. You want one that has the words the correct way up on your camera. Most disconcerting if the writing's upside down. Certainly fragmented, it's lift off as easily as anything. Alright, that's looking quite good. I'll just clean the excess off around the edges with a cotton bud moistened with a bit of naphtha. Get that loose stuff off the edge. And that's best done while the adhesive is still soft. Okay, that gives me something to work with. I'll try getting that piece of leatherette back into that patch first. And I'll do that by putting some adhesive on that patch. And then see if I can work that into position. Oh, that's a bit generous.
All right, that looks fairly good. Just wipe over that with a bit of naphtha to lift off adhesive that's squeezed out around the edges. Right, well we don't know how successful that's going to be until it's all dry really. Just keeping an eye on any lumps, so I see bumps on the leatherette which means that yeah, it's pulling back away from the surface because it's been stretched out of shape and isn't enthusiastic about lying flat. Okay, so well, pieces are falling out while I look at this. Not that way. Alright, I think I understand what I'm doing with that. got a piece for there too. It's difficult making sure you've got these pieces the right way up. It's so small. It's that one. A bit more cleaning up work and I'll carry on and get those last few bits and pieces in place. Well I've been busy working on the leatherette on the back door of the camera and uh, I haven't finished with it but it's looking very promising. But in the meantime I've got to deal with this somewhat sad and dirty camera. I've got to strip this right down to the chassis, get rid of everything basically, and start cleaning it up. So I will start at the top cover, 
and I'll spin off the rewind knob and I'll the screw in this one's a little bit loose anyway so I can undo that with my fingers and basically I'm going to separate the parts here into two piles those parts that are going to go through the ultrasonic cleaner and you can probably see the rust on here these parts will get cleaned by hand and the reason some parts get cleaned by hand and some go through the ultrasonic cleaner is that the ultrasonic cleaner is very efficient at removing paint so that means it's very efficient at removing the markings out of the control discs now the metered dial on this camera has to be removed I'll have that screw off and these bits don't get cleaned in the cleaner the top cover this should come off easily can't see the screwdriver I'm looking for but that's okay we can make do now typically because I'm very familiar with these cameras I just throw all the screws into the cleaner and deal with the mess afterwards because I know what I'm looking for when I go to put things back but if you're taking a camera apart you may well be advised to lay all the screws out neatly with the parts that they need to hold in place okay so here I'm going to hold my finger on the top of the meter so it doesn't lift off the top cover lift my top cover off and pop that neatly to one side for some further attention the meter let's have a look at this I can remove the shutter release button the meter will lift off in this case it would have been held originally with this uh, a little plastic hoop here which just sat over the top of the screw here the plastic hoop has almost always given up the ghost as it has in this case now this meter sticks so it's going to need some serious attention let's carry on here's our film release button now the springs I do not put through the cleaner because they're prone to getting lost or damaged the strap lug here at the end of the camera you can probably see that that's curved that's bent up that means the camera's been dropped on its end that's hardly a surprise I already know that the base plate on this camera has been smashed in at that end too so the camera's had a hard life those pieces can go through the cleaner I'm putting them in the wrong place there Now this post here that the film release button runs on, someone's carved a slot in the top of that to engage a screwdriver. So it tells me that someone had worked on this camera previously, didn't have the benefit of a special tool like this one. Remove that screw there. A little bit rough looking, I think it'll do though. A lot of these screws are very tight. I think it means one of two things. It means somebody did them up very tight or they're stuck with corrosion typically. Oh. I certainly don't want to turn. I'm looking to see if there are any washers underneath this bracket shim washers and there is there I don't put them through the cleaner because I tend to lose them 
This chrome trim plate will need to be cleaned separately. This plate is now loose and likewise I need to check to see if there are any shim washers underneath that and there are not. Here's our shutter cocking rack. I'm just having a quick inspection of the teeth. They look pretty good. I'm checking to see if it's unusually stiff here because we know that the film advance lever tends to stick out. I'll take this screw out of the top of the film advance. That gear may be damaged or it's just clogged up with rubbish, I can't tell. I'll know once I've got it apart, once it's cleaned. I'll be able to tell what sort of a state it's in. That can come off, that can come off, that can come off. That can come off. Two screws here. This one, that screw, the shoulder on the top of it acts as the support for the rack to keep it in contact with the gear. It um, does the job, but it sort of does it in a bit of a half-hearted way. I'll just recover the spring from that. Put that to one side. This is for the pull that stops the film advance from revolving backwards. At the top of the camera, I've got two screws hold the rangefinder to the camera body. And this screwdriver is, is sized such that it, it jams in those screws very efficiently to the extent that I can lift the screws right out and on the end of the screwdriver. Right, there's my range finder. I'm having a look at that. Yeah, it is hazy. It's just dirty really. That'll need to be cleaned. Put that aside for later attention. Two screws hold the rewind shaft in place. Here's the outer collar and the shaft is two pieces of course. Get out the inner piece. There's a stray screw. Alright, the shutter release shaft here. Now there should be a return spring down inside here. I'll leave that in place for the moment. And I'll take the cover off the bottom of the camera. And I can show you how that all fits together. So here I need this off. So I do need my smaller screwdrivers. And that, uh, the screwdrivers were just hiding on the other side of the room. These screws are only chrome brass, they're easily damaged, so it's important to get your screwdriver, a good fitting screwdriver, firmly into the slot and keep the tension on it to make sure you don't slip off. Alright, so these three components I typically do not put through the cleaner. The spring is a little bit wiggly shaped. It suggests to me someone's had fights with that in the past. The leatherette patch on the advance lever. This leatherette's very dry and it's quite well glued. So this may or may not, not come off easily. No, it's coming off. The leather, it's got a very dry grey look to it. Film advance lever, three screws. The screws are tight. Oh, 
which is good. It's a good sign. Nothing much to say about the lever. The rubber pad here is worn out and will need to be replaced. The leatherettes. Right, you can see how the leatherettes flapping. So it's at least partly loose. Yeah, you saw a puff of dust come out from under there. That's corrosion. So there's certainly corrosion under the leatherettes. Which is hardly surprising. The corrosion is probably what's caused the leatherettes to lift off easily. It's like on the front panels of the camera. The corrosion has basically undercut the, the glue. The, the glue no longer bonds to the aluminium because the aluminium is no longer there. It's aluminium oxide or it's some salt of some sort. And there you go, you can see embossed rubbish here that's corrosion products that will need to come off. So the base plate trim here. I've got screws around the outside. You can see that this end is well thumped in. Um, whether I'll be able to straighten that up and improve it enough to make it worthwhile using that trim plate or whether I'm going to have to find a new plate for my parts bins, I don't know yet. I, have a lot. I always try and straighten things up if I possibly can. When you're dealing with 60 year old cameras the there are no new parts to be had. You, every time you take a part from something else, you're condemning the something else to certain death. Yeah, that's pretty ugly. Okay, I've got this down far enough that I can remove the door. So I'll remove the hinge pin screw from the base here. The camera over, remove the hinge pin screw at the top, and there's a shim washer at the top of that door. And that door is pretty filthy. There's a shim washer at the bottom of the door. In fact, this might be two. It's hard to tell. Check to see if there's another one hiding up here. No. Okay. We're looking into the front of the camera. Let's get that elastic band out of the way so you can see what's going on. You can see a shutter release shaft here. I'll zoom you in. And that shaft passes through the casting at the top, through the top loop here of the bracket. There's a lower bracket and an upper bracket here, which are fixed to the shroud. Then it passes, it hits this sleeve here. So the shutter release acts on this sleeve, which has a little finger on it, which acts on this piece in turn, which acts on that piece and releases the shutter. Now importantly, there's a return spring here. I'll slide this up and get that spring out. Now that's not going to be present on every camera. And it's not present on every camera because some cameras never had it. And in other cases because it fell out and someone didn't know how to get it back in place. Or worse still, what tends to happen is, I'll remove this shutter release shaft completely, is when the shutter release shaft is removed completely, that spring can fall into that gap there. And that gap gets down inside the shroud, around the bellows, there's no way you can rattle that spring back out of that hole once it falls down there. 
if you reassemble the camera and you don't know you've lost the spring, when you close the front of the camera, typically the spring will get munched up somewhere and then it'll be firmly lodged. You may be in a situation where you can't actually shut the front of the camera correctly or alternatively it may get caught into the mechanism such that you can't open the front of the camera completely and that will be as a result of letting this film, this shutter release fall out. So you always need to be aware of the position of that shutter release and typically when I'm reassembling cameras you'll see me I just run a, a rubber band around it back typically back to the rewind knob so that it can't fall out. Now in this case the other thing here of note is of course that sleeve. If that shutter was cocked then the shutter release could be depressed means this piece could be depressed and it creates an opportunity for that sleeve to fall out. So if the shutter was in the cocked position when somebody lifted that shutter release pin out, it's quite possible for this sleeve to fall out and again when that falls out that tends to fall out into the space between the shroud and the bellows and to get it back out basically means stripping the entire camera right down to the chassis. That's not my problem today, I've got to strip the camera right down to the chassis anyway because it's a filthy mess. So I'm going to remove the lens and shutter assembly. Now getting a removal a tool for engaging that retaining ring is basically difficult. You, you're reduced to making your own or if you know somebody else who's got a lathe and knows how to use it, getting them to make you one. There used to be a tool available from a man named Beljan, Joe I think, and but he no longer makes them. He used to get them on eBay. Right, so that's off. I'll carry on with this, I think, get the focus mount out. So this little screw at the top of the camera, that couples to the rangefinder arm. And that screw screws into a post on this piece which I'll show you in a second. It screws into here. So as this piece moves inwards and outwards that screw moves with it and so moves the rangefinder. Now here's our focus mount and I need to mark this so I know where it goes back together again. And normally I mark this so that I have got the front surfaces dead level with each other. That's the inner and outer helical. It's because that's a handy reference point. So I'm just checking when, the, yeah, about there. And normally what I do is I put a pair of scribe lines at the bottom and a single line at the top. Now I have my focus scale ring marked relative to the outer helical and my outer helical marked relative to the inner helical. So I can remove these four screws and I'm not going to get into trouble. Let's get rid of that screwdriver, that's too broad for these tiny little screws. There are two screws holding this little piece here on, which I think is also called a shroud, just to confuse people, or a cover. 
Kodak were never very imaginative when they were passing out the names for the parts. You had to identify things by part number and the descriptive word was always something stupid like screw or cover or spring. Let's we'll remove that front gear. We can remove the piece there. Now I'm just going to stop here because my video camera is telling me that the batteries are flat.